welcome you to the Burke County Board of Commissioners regular meeting for Tuesday, December the 21st, 2021 at 6 p.m. All commissioners are present, county manager, clerk, deputy, and our counselor. Thank you all for being here. Let me remind you, as I remind myself, please take uh, your cell phone and uh, be sure it's muted or any other devices that may make a noise so that uh, we don't have interruptions tonight during our meeting. And I'll remind the commissioners as well as those who come to the podium, please be sure to turn the microphone on. Should be the button on the right and the red light should come on. Please be sure that it's on when you speak so that we can hear you and get a good recording of our meeting tonight. We're pleased to have Pastor David Bridges with the First Apostolic Church with us tonight for our invocation. And Brother David, I'm going to ask you to come and uh, then following the invocation, our county attorney, Mr. J.R. Simpson, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's stand together, please. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you not only for this day that you've blessed us with, but this time of year that we have to celebrate the fact, Lord, that you loved us enough to come to die for our sins, to save us from those sins, God. We celebrate you this time of year. We pray over this meeting tonight, God, that you would let your grace and mercy be upon every speaker, upon every commissioner, Lord. I pray that you would continue to bless, lead, and guide, and direct our county into what you would have us to be, Lord, as we give you the praise and honor for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just item number four tonight on our agenda, organization of the board being the first meeting in December. That brings us to our organizational meeting. And at this time, I want to open the floor for nominations for chair. Mr. Chairman, I uh, nominate Mr. Taylor for the position of the chairman. Okay, thank you, Wayne. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate vice chair Mr. Scott Mulwee for chairman. Thank you. Mr. Carson, are there other nominations? Hearing none, I'll close the nominations and we'll vote in the order received. Those in favor of Commissioner Taylor as chair, please signify by the uplifted hand. Thank you, that's two. And those in favor of Scott Mowey as chair, please signify by the uplifted hand. And that'll be three. So with that, Mr. Mowey, you're elected as chair, and I will uh, just simply comment. I appreciate the opportunity to have and serve as chair, and with that, I'll turn the meeting over to you. Thank you, Commissioner Britton. Um, I'm honored to be your uh, chair for 2022. Uh, I know the work that you put in. Um, uh, all of you have had the honor of being chairman of this board at some point. I know the time time demands that it, 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 it does take upon your personal life and that being said I'd like to uh, thank my wife Laura for being patient especially in this coming year uh, we've got quite an agenda and a lot of things we uh, want to achieve in 2022 so we look forward to I look forward to this opportunity so uh, thank all of you and thank you for your service uh, doing a wonderful job as chair in 2021 That being said, I will uh, we'll move on to the election of vice chairman for 2022. Um, at this point, at this time, I'll open the floor for nominations for vice chairman. Mr. Chairman, I nominate Chairman uh, Commissioner Wayne Abley, please. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I nominate Commissioner Carswell. Are there any further nominations? If not, nominations are closed. We will vote on the nominations in the order they were received. All those in favor for uh, Commissioner Abley as uh, Vice Chair, please signify with the uplifted hand. It's two votes. Um, all those in favor of Commissioner Carswell as Vice Chair, please signify by raising the, uh, your uplifted right hand. 
Madam Clerk, that's three to two. Congratulations to Commissioner Carswell as Vice Chair. And at this point, now we'll move on to uh, item number three uh, for the appointment of county, the county attorney for 2022. Uh, I will now open the uh, floor for nominations for county attorney. Chairman, I nominate Betty Deal for uh, that position. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate James Reed Simpson. Thank you very much. Are there any further nominations? If not, the nominations are now closed. All those in favor uh, to appoint uh, Ready Deal uh, to the position of County Attorney for the Burke County Board of Commissioners for 2022, signify by the uh, raising of the right hand. That's two votes. All those in favor of James Reed Simpson as the County Attorney for Burke County Board of Commissioners for 2022, signify by raising the right hand. That's three votes, Madam Clerk. Congratulations, JR. Moving on to item number four, appointment of tax attorney for 2022. Um, I will now open the floor for nominations for tax attorney. Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate the Kanye Law Firm for this position. Thank you, Commissioner Britton. Are there any further nominations? If not, nominations are now closed. All those in favor to appoint Kanye Law Firm as the tax attorney for the Burke County Board of Commissioners for 2022 signify with a raising of the right hand. That is five nothing, Madam Clerk. Thank you all very much. Moving on to item number five, appointment of the clerk to the board for 2022. Um, I will now open the floor for nominations for clerk to the board. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. Are there any further nominations? If not, nominations are closed. All those in favor of appointing K, um, Ms. K. Drawn as the clerk to the board of the Burke County Board of Commissioners for 2022 signify with the raising of the right hand. That will be five. Nothing, Madam Clerk. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. So the organization of the board has been completed. Thank you, gentlemen. This brings us to item number five, approval of the agenda. Gentlemen, you've had time to review this. Are there any corrections? And do we have a motion to accept if not? Make a motion we approve that. Render. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. All those in favor, signify with a uh -oh, raising of the right hand. That will be five nothing, Madam Clerk. Thank y'all very much. Moving on to item number six, approval of meeting minutes. Those were previously submitted for October 5th, 2021, Board of Commissioner pre-agenda meeting, and October 19th, 2021, Board of Commissioners regular meeting. Do we have a motion to accept as presented? So moved, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Britton. All those in favor of approval of those minutes, uh, signify with the raising of the right hand. That will be five nothing, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Get coming up here. Now we will uh, we'll move on to item number seven, presentations, community development, online inspection, scheduling system presentation, presented by Shane Prisby, operations manager. Hey, Shane. Evening, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all very much for having us up here. I'm very excited to talk to you about the new offerings that Community Development Department has for the citizens of Burke County. And over the past calendar year, Burke County has conducted about 5,800 building inspections across the county. Each one of these inspections needs to be scheduled through our department. And prior to now, the only way that that could be done was through a phone call directly into our department, interacting with one of our staff to take that information from the citizens, write it down, and schedule the inspection. 5,800 times in the last calendar year. Over the past several years, um, the trend has really changed with 
um, and, and sped up with the expectation of citizens that more and more services would be offered online, available 24 hours a day via computer or a phone. And as technology progresses, so is the county to keep up with this expectation and provide continued customer service and convenience for the citizens of Burke County. <clears throat> IT and finance are currently working hard to look at integrated solutions for permits, online pay, all sorts of systems that are going to be uh, really beneficial to the county, the county staff, and the citizens as a whole. But as an interim step, our department looked inward and said, well, can we work with what we have now for ways that we can be more adaptive to the needs of the citizens in this current time in place and, and respond as quickly as we can? put our heads together, we worked with different departments, and we were able to come up with moving some of our base functions into an online format. And one of the first ones we noted as low-hanging fruit with high reward would be scheduling and building inspection. So we built an online form, we tested it on the back end, and we were very happy with what uh, the successes that we had and what it can do for the citizens. So we went ahead and, as you can see up on the screen, produced um, wallet size, uh, uh, business card sized um, inspections codes. So it, it's a quick one, two, three step that we handed out to every new permit, uh, handed out to our inspectors to deliver on the job site so that we can start letting people know that you can go online, the web link is there, you can take a picture of it with your phone, it's gonna bring you right there. You bookmark the page and now you don't have to call in our department. And really what that does is it frees up our department um, from taking those 5,800 inspection requests directly from something that is really a transactional in nature where you have information from your permit that we need to schedule, we need that information from you. Each one of those calls may not take more than three minutes, but that's three minutes 5,800 times in a year. That's a lot of burden on our staff time. Over the past year, um, in a one month span, our department averaged 77 calls a day, primarily through our front desk. Um, and primarily through uh, our senior administration specialist, Amy Swanson. And that's just a tremendous volume, especially when you consider all of the citizens who have in-depth, specialized, lengthy questions that we're here to help. So moving these kind of functions online allows us to spend that time with the people who have those in-depth questions, really complex questions, or are new to the rules and regulations that we have as a county so we can give them that personalized, individualized attention that they need to make the right decisions for them and their family and obey the rules and regulations that we have for all of us. So we're really excited about this new form. And I'd like to show it to you all. I'll pop it up here. So it's built with existing um, web forms that we have uh, as part of the new county website that we went through the overhaul. It's very straightforward. We try to keep it as simple as possible. You've got your permit number, type of inspection, contact information, the basic questions that we ask every day on the form. And I'll show you what it looks like when we fill it out. So as you can see, here is a test form that we put out. It's a typical kind of inspection. Simple information, once people get used to doing it, it walks you through it. There's a calendar thing, uh, app that pops up, a little widget that says, this is the date I want. You select it from the calendar. And then when you've got all your information in, looks good to go, you hit submit. You get a caption to make sure that we are protecting ourselves on the back end from uh, all spammers and other things that can happen with submitting online forms. You go through that, form submitted, you get confirmation. From that, you're done. On our end, we receive an email that has all the information. We go through, we schedule it, we send an email back to um, the citizen to say that you're all set, this is the date of your inspection, call us if you have any questions and you're good to go. And this form alone has saved us a tremendous amount of time and it'll take a little bit for the rollout and the adoption, but our contractors, they're, they're very tech savvy. Every one of them works out of the smartphone nowadays and this just makes it more convenient. So we're running this out as a pilot program We've got our uh, code enforcement complaint form up on our website as well, working with some of our basic forms, basic interactions with the citizens that we see every day to make it easy for them to find the forms. Um, in our world, increasingly, people are, saying, are going to our website first. 
that's really becoming re the face of how we're interacting with the public. So we're spending the time making it user friendly, answering the questions that they have and trying to get these forms like this and others up online over the next coming months and into this next year so that we can be responsive, we can be better government for them and get them the information they need on the first time. So when they call us, it's not a 35 minute call, it's a five minute call because they know the basic questions, they know the basic information and we can send them to the forms and it's there waiting for them at their fingertips. So thank you very much. We're really excited about this. I hope you are as well. Um, and we're looking forward to rolling out new forms and, and new opportunities to, to better serve the citizens of Burke County. And I'd love to answer questions you may have. Thank you, Shane. Great work. Um, I know that was a lot of effort and work put into this. Um, any questions or comments for Shane? Mr. Chair, um, Shane, so this is, is this live at this already? Yes, sir, this is live up on the website. Uh, we've been running it for, I believe, about a month now. Um, so we've got some trickling in. We've got it set up in our Microsoft system so that it's real easy on our end to see when you get a new notification so we won't miss one. Um, and everyone has access to it across our department. So that way, if somebody's out sick it, through the holiday times when people are still scheduling, we don't miss a beat. People don't miss an inspection. Getting any feedback so far? Um, a little bit so far we've got I think some of the best feedback is that people are using it and I think the best feedback I think that we can get is that we've had people use it that I know did not have a car did not we didn't approach about them they found it and I think that that is just a, a proof of concept that people are looking for ways that they can submit these things online and make it easier for them um, and to me that's that's where we want to be and that's where we're headed thank you Shane, uh, you, you uh, took the words out of my life, my mouth about how much time it could save. It's not only the time, it's the wear and tear on your car and the gasoline and all that good stuff. But I do have a question for the citizens, and especially the senior citizens, and uh, need to know if uh, you do not have a computer, you don't have access to a computer, I have two teachers living in my expanded community that when they retired from teaching, they threw their <laughs> electronic devices away and uh, one of them comes to me every once in a while to do an email for them, but um, I, I'm assuming that if uh, the senior citizens had children, that children or neighbors uh, would be allowed to fill out the form on their behalf and send it? Uh, yes, that's correct, Mr. Taylor. We, uh, Commissioner Taylor, my apologies. We have a lot of different options to serve the citizens of Burke County, mm -hmm. whether that's online forms, whether that's um, through email, through our website, or being in person. Um, really what we want to do is provide as many options to fit everybody's need. We understand that not everybody is going to have access to technology. Not everybody is going to understand um, the complexities of, of some of the technologies we have. We're, we're going through an all of the above approach. We're, we're trying to get the bulk of folks to go to this new technology, which is where the bulk of folks are wanting to going, and that frees us up to be able to um, address um, different residents of the county and give them individualized attention that we wouldn't have time for um, or as much time as we would like to in other situations if we're dealing with a high volume of calls. So uh, to your point and to your question uh, that yes, um, I, we see a lot of younger generation helping their parents and grandparents navigate some of the forms. Um, sometimes that's through verbal translation uh, with first and second generations coming into the county. Um, to break through language barriers and we're looking at ways we can be more responsive to everybody's needs. Good. Thank you. It will, uh, as we've already stated, save a lot of time and money. So it's a move forward for sure. Any other questions or comments for Shane? Shane, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. We will need a motion to accept the report as presented. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. All those in favor, uh, signify with uplifted hand. 5-0, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.
brings us to item number eight, schedule to public hearings, community development, zoning map amendment ZMA 2021-112 and public hearing uh, presented by Ellen Glines, our planning director. Hey, Ellen. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Members of the commission and members of the public, we have a request from Late James Real Estate and Slope Solutions to rezone a seven and a half acre parcel of land uh, from residential three R3 to conservation. Let's start our slides here. Uh, this slide shows the current zoning of the property. Uh, the parcel uh, to be requested uh, for the rezoning is outlined here in red. It's um, a seven and a half acre track. Um, the request to go from residential three to conservation means that it would leave the residential district which allows single family manufacturing and, and other types of uses. The parcel is identified in the county records as 40052 with an address of 7329 South Mountain Institute Road. Um, this is a state maintained road, SR 1236, so it's a good road access there. Access will come from an adjoining property owned by the same applicant, Slope Solutions. Be kind of in this area here, coming off of South Mountain Institute Road. Although we do not have a site plan at this time, so we're not reviewing a site plan, we're just reviewing a zoning application. Uh, if we should get a commercial development proposal at this site, Burke County's site development plan review team would review it for sufficient access and public safety, as well as meeting all of our codes and ordinances, including for well and septic service here. So if we get that in the future, we will be reviewing it through our site plan team. This is part of the northwest corner of Lake James, and the, uh, the parcel itself is located within Linville Township and the Longtown Fire District of Burke County. It's also within a critical WS4 uh, watershed area and is located within the scenic overlay. Uh, zoning in this area includes um, other parcels that are zoned R3. This is all conservation here in green and this is uh, community business, neighborhood business. A little bit for make sure everybody can hear me. Um, the next slide shows the current land use of this property and we have a variety of options here on the right uh, in the in the map here but basically we have vacant tracts of land and agricultural uses. Uh, the, the territory in yellow is typically uh, residential in nature most of which is single-family homes. Uh, there's a lot of uh, pastures in that side of uh, the area of, of the county as well. Um, and we're, we have two businesses located in this area. It's, there's one, um, let me go back, oops, right here. Uh, this is um, a real estate office for Lake James Real Estate. And then uh, Fonta Flora Brewery is just off the map here to the southwest, pretty close by. And then this is an aerial for this same territory. This is our parcel here, wooded surrounded by um, sort of open pasture lands uh, and mostly undeveloped in this part of the county so far. There is one abandoned business here. It's not open now, but it's at one time it was the Longtown Grocery. No, no longer in use. Hopefully some point we'll find a new use out there. And this next map is the future land use map. Now this is coming out of the 2016 to 2030 Blueprint Burke Strategic Land Use Plan. This map represents a general land use pattern identified for Burke County for the next 15 to 20 years. It was adopted back in about 2016. The subject parcel is located within the Lake James Special Planning Area. And as the name implies, this is a focused around Lake James uh, and expected to enhance the natural and environmental resources around the lake with emphasis on aesthetic qualities of new development. With the Lake James region being the center of tourism and multiple outdoor recreation uses, there is an expectation for moderate commercial development as well as residential growth 
that will complement the lake environment and improve activities around the lake. So give many things for people to do, places for business to occur. As I said, is um, with the existing zoning here, uh, the site is part of a really interesting little commercial crossroads. This is sort of that neighborhood node that we'd like to activate uh, throughout uh, portions of the county in appropriate locations. Well, this would be one of those since we have state road and good access uh, from two highway points. And note those uh, neighborhood business zone properties in the pink there. The conservation district, which is the request, allows lower density development and uses in order to provide adequate protection for environmental areas, wildlife habitats, protect viable working farms, maintain the integrity of rural view sheds and landscapes. The zoning ordinance presents um, a, an effective table of uses. I have the whole uh, zoning ordinance here. Um, it does show which are permitted uses. All residential uses would be allowed in a conservation uh, type of a district, but it also allows non-residential uses, and that's part of the conservation. It could be uh, lower impact commercial uses, such as golf course, parks, public stables, special event grounds, um, in, the, in the right location, obviously, marinas, um, community centers, motels, restaurants, some other things like that. This area of the county is also uh, located in that scenic overlay district I mentioned. The scenic overlay encourages reasonable and appropriate development that is sensitive to the aesthetic, environmental, and economic concerns. Development in this district should be compatible with the area's natural resources, cultural history, wildlife habitat, scenic landscapes, and promoting tourism and recreation activities for both residents and visitors alike. So as you see, we're doing a lot in this part of the uh, the county with this planning, all this planning and, and special uh, considerations here. It's staff opinion that rezoning the seven uh, and a half acre property to the conservation zoning district would complement and enhance the overall character of the area. This area is lacking essential non-residential services and amenities to attract tourism and serve the residential growth that has taken place over the past 15 years. This area is especially lacking in grocery, entertainment, and restaurant venues. Although the vast majority of the land in the area is zoned conservation as seen in the green on the map, there, there have not been any uh, developments proposed so far. However, these folks have, have made efforts to purchase this property and would like to move it along. And so we hope that uh, their investment in the purchase of the property, uh, a successful rezoning, and other things will help move, move new development and activities along for this area of the county. The planning board reviewed this rezoning request on October 28th. The applicant stated that there was no definite plan, but suggested that they were studying the plausibility of a special event venue on the site. We're not sure about that yet, but we'll keep an eye out for it and review it if it comes in. There were several members of the public in attendance. The questions were related to the proposed use of the property, uh, if it was rezoned, and possible impacts on their residential use. Staff stated that the zoning ordinance has standards in place which are meant to address potential impacts to surrounding properties such as building setbacks, landscape buffers between commercial uses and residential uses, limits on buildable areas and special design standards, all, all in place to protect view sheds and, and neighboring properties. Any proposed plan for non-residential development would have to go through that site plan uh, review process with our site plan review team. So we do that every time. Uh, and we would make sure those um, standards are reviewed and enforced in the plans. After hearing from staff and the property representative, the planning board voted 4-0 to recommend approval of this request. I do have some photos here. Whoop, maybe we don't. Okay, beg your pardon. Um, our online staff report had uh, noted some uh, area photographs and um, the area is sort of underdeveloped in that throughout that part of town. Now, when we have a rezoning, it's customary for, for staff to, we provide a suggested motion, which could be considered by the commission after the appropriate hearing and, and public comment. The style of the motion 
includes a consistency statement it built into that motion so if, if if you found that you were inclined to support the motion you could use this motion or adjust it to your particular um, thoughts or consideration about an, an approval but the way the form is you wouldn't necessarily have to reread that consistency statement what we'll do is well, if, if approved, we would put that consistency statement into the ordinance itself, so it becomes part of the body of the record. But the um, the way this is formatted with this motion, it kind of builds it into the statement. So um, I can answer any questions for you if you have anything for this request so far. Any questions for Alan? Thank you. Questions or comments? Okay, at this this time I will now open the public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to this item? Good evening. I'm Dr. Courtney Mull and we live at 5127 Piedmont Road in Oak Hill. I'm here to talk about statute 102.1 in our Confederate monument. Ma'am, that, that's that'll be under informal public comments. This is we're at this point we're speaking to a, a rezoning issue. I apologize. That's okay. That's okay. Anyone else? I'm Dennis Stamper. Um, I'm resident here and I've signed up to speak as are you wanting to speak in informal public comments it's, it's, yes next this, section, that's next the next section. section. Okay. this is this is specifically to the issue on, on the rezoning oh, issue put forth that's okay and get a little confusing that's okay <laughs> don't worry is there anybody here to speak to this specific issue okay if not I'll now close the public hearing uh, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt ordinance number 2021-21 amending the Burke County zoning map as it relates to ZMA 2021-12 for a 7.51 acre property. Read number 40052 located at 7329 South Mountain Institute Road from residential three to conservation and find that the request is consistent with the blueprint Burke plan which shows the area as the Lake James special planning area set aside for a mix of residential and special lake focused uses. And further find that the request is reasonable and in the public interest in that the growing residential population around the lake is in need of services and amenities to serve it and the conservation zone allows for a number of non-residential uses. Thank you, Commissioner Britton. All those in favor of the motion signify with the uplifted hand. Those opposed? It's full. Chairman, do we need the consistency statement with that? That was incorporated into the motion, um, Commissioner Taylor. Yes, sir. You got that, Madam Clerk? Okay. Now we'll move on to item number nine, informal public comments. Madam Clerk, uh, do we have uh, any speakers? We Sign. do, Mr. Chairman. I have um, a few folks that have pre-registered. The first one I would call on is Mr. Wayne Neal. And I would ask the speakers as they come uh, before us, uh, the uh, speaker is already activated, but um, I would ask that you state your uh, name and address for the record and also um, uh, please limit your time to three minutes okay my name's uh, Charles Wayne Neal I'm employed with the county uh, I wrote this out and uh, I want to read it to you it's, it's something from my mind from my heart it's been on my mind and my heart for about three years I want to thank you for letting me come here and tell you what's on my mind. I'm a veteran. And I lived in Bur I've lived in Burke County for 50 years. And out of 50 years I've lived, I've had 12 different jobs. 
when I got back from Vietnam, out of those 12 jobs, some were part-time. And I was paid holiday pay for part-time. Out of those part-time jobs, I believe I was paid holiday pay because it was something that they wanted to give me, something they appreciated me because I was a veteran. I like what I do. I've lived here 50 years. And out of 50 years, the only part-time job that I like is what I do now. Sure, I just get regular pay. I'm not asking for a handout by no means. I'm here for veterans that work on November the 11th. And the ones that work that are not veterans that work part time. I want to ask the ones on the board. And I'm not judging you. How many served in Vietnam? Seriously. And the reason why I asked you that when you get your paycheck, are you comfortable with receiving holiday pay for November the 11th? What hit me the most was when I was found out that November the 11th Vets do not get holiday pay. I believe it could be changed to where November the 11th, part-time work for veterans get paid on this special day. I believe the county could do justice to vets that work that day for the county and the city. February the 14th comes around, other holidays come around, Memorial Day comes around, Veterans Day comes around only one time. When I go to work down there, down 18, and I put the key in, and I work this past Veterans Day, and I put it in. I get regular pay, sure, but I don't get veterans pay. Other, other people get paid, and they're not even veterans. And it, it kind of gets me. I served seven months in Vietnam. I was seven months. I served 18 months in the hospital. I come back with three purple hearts. I'm not bragging or anything. But I look at myself and I say to myself, could not the county do something for veterans that work for the county part time for veterans instead of just giving them a regular pay. Seriously, think about it. You've got 11 months to really think about it. To where I go in on Veterans Day, I'm 75, be 76. I'll probably work another three or four more years down there. Mr. Neal, thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. Thank, appreciate you, for, you. thank you for your service, too, sir. Mr. Dennis Stamper. Good evening. I'm Dennis Stamper with 3350 Conley Road. I come here tonight as a new resident to Burke County. But although I'm new to living here, I am not new to this community. I know some of you. Uh, I have worked in this community for nearly 30 years now. The last 20 of those, I've served the people of this community as a hospital chaplain. I come here with a love for all the people of this community. I come here with a pastor's heart. Over those 20 years as a chaplain, I accompanied countless folks through hurt and illness, death and grief. I've always tried to do what good I could and end what suffering that I could, or at least ease it. 
But most of that suffering was unavoidable. It was sickness and injury and death, and it eventually comes to us all. But there are other hurts that can be relieved and often avoided if we but have the kindness and the compassion and the goodwill to do so. And that's why I've asked to speak to you tonight, because, you see, I believe that the Confederate monument in the public square on our courthouse lawn is the cause of avoidable pain and suffering. Now, there are those who believe it's just a statue, not a big deal, and those who oppose it should find a more important and impressing issue to address and just let it be. And for those of us who look like you and me, those whose ancestors are represented by the man on that statue, that may seem like a reasonable approach. But surely, we can all understand how those who are the descendants of the unfortunate souls who suffered under the bonds of slavery the presence of that statue might naturally and very reasonably be a cause of painful hurt, of, painful, of a painful past, and a still challenged present. It's my understanding that a number of those good folks have stood here before you and respectfully asked that you consider their hurt. And as elected leaders of all of this community to consider and deem important their feelings and their heritage too. And so I ask you, as one citizen to another, but more importantly as one human being to another, to please open your hearts and your minds to a serious and compassionate discussion of this issue with the hope and the goal of finding a creative solution that can bring healing while honoring the heritage of us all. Surely, as reasonable people, we can understand their hurt, can't we? Surely, as compassionate people, that makes a difference to us, doesn't it? Surely, as creative people, we can find a way can't we? Surely, surely, as servant leaders of all of our citizens, you would want to do that, wouldn't you? I thank you for your time and pray for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Stamper. Ms. Courtney Mall. I'm Dr. Courtney Mall and we live at 5127 Piedmont Road in Oak Hill. I was born in Grace Hospital. Dad moved here for Champion Paper and later Drexel Heritage. My mom taught elementary school. They had four kids. We've been lifelong members of First Baptist Morganton where I now serve as a deacon. Dad passed away from gallstone pancreatitis after a five month ICU battle and then I returned to Morganton. I did primary care here for six years and have worked in urgent care the past eight. Statute 102.1 allows under exemptions for a building inspector or similar official to remove or relocate an object of remembrance if they determine it poses a threat to public safety because of an unsafe or dangerous condition. It also specifically states that if an object of remembrance satisfies that requirement of being unsafe, it is not constrained to the limitations on removal previously described in the statute. In other words, if our monument were deemed unsafe, it would not need to be relocated to a site of similar prominence, honor, visibility, availability, and access. It could simply be moved to a different location. As county commissioners, you've been elected to protect the health and safety of our community, especially following the armed conflict that occurred summer 2020 on our city square. This monument meets criteria of being unsafe. I am tired of hearing arguments about honor and heritage. True honor does not dishonor a good person. Attachment to an idol which does bring dishonor to good people, is false honor. It's self-centeredness and petulance. And heritage of only one group should not be preferentially displayed on public grounds. Working with the public now for many years, I've never seen the division and aggressiveness I've witnessed in the last two. 
Good people can act unreasonably when under stress. I've also witnessed an increasing number of patients struggling with mental health and substance abuse issues. Unfortunately, our monument and the flags on our borders declare safe haven for those ruminating in old patterns of racism and white supremacist beliefs. This racism is a public health issue for our county citizens. As community leaders, you have the ability to check and limit those unsafe and occasionally violent patterns. Our city's courthouse renovations feel like a patient getting a knee replacement before surgery on a blown heart valve. They're beautiful renovations, but we should focus first on advancing safety and true community inclusiveness. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moll. We have any other? Ms. Carla Kincaid from Oak Hill. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Carla Kincaid, 1276 NC Highway 126. Well, I just want to thank you gentlemen for this year for allowing me to come and speak uh, on behalf of citizens and just to be able to stand um, in this hope of a uh, season of hope and joy and peace and love. Um, I just want to say thank you. And as uh, we go forth in a new year, you'll see me again. <laughs> but uh, just wanted to um, to thank you guys for letting me come up uh, this year to display my feelings uh, and others in reference to the the Confederate flag. I think by now you know how I feel in reference to that. Uh, I'll continue to, and I know a lot of things may be out of your hands. There's a such thing as a adult peer pressure, as I tell my kids in, in school previously, uh, that is adult peer pressure as well, uh, that you're probably getting it from both sides as well. But uh, I'll continue to research and, 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 and contact within Raleigh to see, you know, what I can do to continue to help to, uh, for solutions as, as far as the Confederate flags, well, Confederate statue, I think the Confederate flags pose more of a problem for Burke County, uh, more so than the the statue does, and I know that's on personal property. So I'm just dreaming one day, may, I may not be there when it happens, but there'll be fines for those who display them on the highways. Or maybe the families will decide to take those down as well. Um, so um, I wouldn't want to um, people to say in the future, well, why didn't someone do something about it? You know, if it's still standing, uh, if the things are still going on as far as the Confederacy symbols are. And I want to know that I've done my best to do what I, I could to do my part in voicing uh, for others as well as the future as far as symbolisms of, of Confederacy and any other racial uh, symbols that we have in our country. And I, I, I believe one day they all will come down and it's my dream and my hope in this season of hope and peace and joy and love which encompasses all unity that one day they'll, it'll be a good world and where everything comes down. Thank you and happy holidays to you guys. Be safe. Thank you, Ms. Kincaid. That's all the cards I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. At this point, I'll close the floor for informal public comments. We'll move on to item number 10, uh, presented by uh, Mr. Steen on the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, you have 20 items on your consent agenda. Number one, BOC 2022 Commissioner's Appointment. Number two, BOC Adoption of Rules of Procedure for 2022. Item three, Clerk Resolution Establishing the BOC 2022 Meeting Schedule. Item four, Clerk Reappointments to the Board of e &R. Item five, Clerk Appointments Removals to the Board of Health. Item six, Clerk Removal Appointment to JCPC. Item 7, Clerk, Appointments, Reappointments to the Library Board of Trustees. 
Item 8, Clerk, reappointments to the TDA. Item 9, Clerk, appointment to WPRTA. Item 10, Clerk, NCDOT Secondary Roads Resolution. Item 11, Clerk, adoption of general records retention schedule for local government agencies. Item 12, Community Development, except Wildlife Resources Commission Watermill Access Mem Memorandum of Agreement. Item 13, County Manager, acknowledgement of intent to retire. Item 14, Finance, approval of comprehensive financial policies. Item 15, Finance, approval of electronic records and imaging policies and procedures. Item 16, Finance response letter to LGC on audit for June 30th, 2021. Item 17, General Services, resolution approving Nouvelle Flume transfer to Hickory. Item 18, PHM, presentation of financial info for the period ending September 30th, 2021. Item 19, Tax Department, tax collection report for November 2021. And item 20, Tax Department Release Refund Report for November 2021. That concludes your consent agenda, gentlemen. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion that we approve all 20 items of the consent agenda as submitted. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. All those in favor, I'll signify with uplifted hand. 5-0, Madam Clerk. Uh, item number 11, items for decision. We have none tonight. Uh, moving on to item number 12, reports and comments. Uh, we'll start with our uh, finance director, Margaret Pierce. I have nothing to report. Thank you all very much for a great year and Merry Christmas. Our county attorney, Mr. Simpson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since the last meeting of commissioners on November 16th, um, I have met with the Sheriff's Office, Animal Services, and uh, an attorney named Greg Rogers uh, to become clear as to the priority and protocol involved when it's necessary to go on uh, an animal owner's property or to obtain an administrative warrant. I've met with Animal Services, again, to prepare for our first civil court order against an animal or owner. I met with General Services and reviewed a waterline relocation agreement. I've reviewed an assignment of easement from Burke County to the City of Hickory. I've worked with a county manager on right-of-way issues concerning certain property that the county is interested in. I have reviewed a proposed easement agreement between the City of Morganton and Burke County. I've prepared two offers to purchase and contract for properties the, the county has an interest in acquiring and have begun preliminary title searches on both of those properties. I have drafted uh, deeds of trust for AC Morganton LLC and Silcando LLC for state building reuse grant awards. And I have met with community development staff for discussion of minor subdivisions and private roads. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and thank you each and every one for your service. I would like to remind you to spay or neuter your pets and adopt or foster a pet from Animal Services. Thank you. Thank you. County manager. Yes, sir. Have a few things. I uh, have some photos for you to look at. Uh, first, Ekronis Building Expansion. Uh, as you know, the project has been underway for, by the new owners for a few months, but they've been kind enough to provide pictures of the expansion. Next is our water tank project. All work is complete except for the painting and some incidentals. At this time, full completion of the project is expected to be by the scheduled startup test date, January 19th, 2022. 
However, weather could impact progress, and here's some photos, and there should be a little bit of a video for you. Next, animal services survey, survey work for the potential new animal services facility on Kirksey Drive has been completed and digital topography information has been forwarded to the project architect. City of Morganton has been notified of the potential project and will be providing the county with utility location information in the near future and soil testing is underway. A Jonas Ridge convenience site, survey work for Jonas Ridge convenience site is nearing completion with expected completion date of 12-20-2021. County attorney may have some final issues to resolve in the near future. The library, Morganton Branch will be closed for approximately two weeks for renovations to be completed. However, customers may obtain materials via curbside service. Uh, there's also online programs will continue and staff will be available by phone and email. And we were recently notified by the State Library of North Carolina that the Burke County Public Library has been approved for an adapting technology grant in the amount of $39,790. ARP approved projects, RFQs for the engineering required for many of these approved water sewer projects are out to bid with a deadline of 12-30-2021. A PO for one of the HVAC projects has been issued. Quotes have been submitted for approval for EMS equipment and supplies as well as general services sewer line monitoring. And these quotes are being reviewed for compliance with ARP guidelines. Anticipate review to be completed prior to the end of December 2021. And the Western Regional Long-Term Substance Abuse Treatment Facility, an RFQ for the architectural services was issued on 12-10-2021 with a deadline for submission of January 11th, 2022 with sealed responses. Uh, please know I'm working with Partners Health Management to host a meeting in late January of 2022 with county managers from counties interested in obtaining services for treatment of their citizens from the proposed facility. I'm also meeting with interested service providers in early February of 2022. Once an architect has been selected, we will involve the service providers in meetings with the architect to develop a remodeling plan for the facility. And I again uh, go Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Mr. Aikman? Just wish everybody a merry and a happy Christmas and to remember the true meaning of Christmas. If we ever need it, uh, Lord, in our lives, I think the time is now. I mean, we're, we're really living in troubled times. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tate? Yes, if I may, I'd. Uh, like to wish and all the commissioner staff, um, citizens, county employees, uh, and uh, all the citizens that are in Burke County that we serve a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, a blessed New Year, and a prosperous 2022. Well said. Thank you. Mr. Britton. No special reports. I would, uh, as others, uh, wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Last Chair Carson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I echo all the sentiments of the commissioners. This has uh, probably been one of the most trying years that we have uh, ever gone through with the COVID issues that we've dealt with, and uh, it's it's been tough on a, a number of households. Uh, I think Dr. Mole probably was right that a lot of people have suffered and uh, not known how to handle some of these things. And it is the time of the season that we reflect on the birth of our Savior. And uh, uh, it's, it's, I hope people will just take a few moments to, uh, again, remember what this season is all about. I don't want to be a negative nanny this evening, but I would like to remind everyone uh, we uh, had to get our friends at the Department of Transportation and others to go back over 
on Huffman Bridge Road, again, to going over to our Marsh Trail site, people still, for whatever reason, decide to dump a mattress on the side of the road or uh, trash. Uh, Burke County is just a great place to live, and uh, I just hate to, see, hate to see it trashed the way it is. So, uh, Chairman Britton, in your tenure, uh, you kept reminding us to pick up a piece of trash. I hope as we move into 2022, we'll do the same thing and everybody will uh, be able to keep our county clean. Uh, congratulations, Chairman Mulvey, and uh, thank you for, uh, for allowing me to say my comments. Thank you, sir. And, um, well, uh, I'm just going to echo the comments already made. Merry Christmas. I hope everybody has a uh, safe and uh, Merry Christmas um, and uh, Happy New Year. Um, some of the comments already made, I was going to remind spading, spay and neuter and uh, please adopt an animal. So it can't be said enough. And, and please pick up a, pick a uh, piece of trash. I will echo those comments and I would encourage with a consult, constant consultation up with your doctor to uh, consider getting vaccinated and boosted so we can defe defeat this uh, um, in this COVID battle we're in currently. Um, so uh, that being said, um, we'll move on to uh, item number 13, vacancy announcements. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the public. We have the following opportunities for citizens to be involved in county boards and committees, the Adult Care and Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee, Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, Burke County Parks and Recreation Commission, City of Morganton Board of Adjustment and Planning Board for the ETJ, Burke Senior Center Advisory Council, Child Protection and Child Fatality Prevention Team, East Burke Senior Center Advisory Board, Burke County Board of Adjustment, Council on Aging, Burke County Board of Health, and Partners Consumer and Family Advisory Committee representing traumatic brain injury. Thank you, Madam Clerk. As uh, she said, you can see we have plenty of uh, uh, vacancies on, uh, in uh, multiple areas, and so um, we're often asked how do people get started and participate in government. Well, there are multiple opportunities right there, and we welcome all the help we can get. So uh, please consider that and uh, consider participation. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, moving on to item number 14, closed session. There is a need to go into closed session. Uh, so. Uh, uh, I accept a motion to go into closed session pursuant to NCGS. Better get my glasses on this one. A 143-318, uh, 1183-45 and 6. So Thank you, Commissioner Abley. We'll move into closed session. Oh, all those in favor? Signify the uplifted hand. Proper motion to come out of closed session was made. Do we have a motion? Um, Mr. Chairman, I do have a motion. I have a motion to approve the purchase of one quarter acre of real property located at 1410 Harris Whisnet Road, Morganton, further identified as PIN number 17642669947, read number. 20522 and to appropriate up to uh, appropriate up to eight thousand five hundred dollars of general fund fund balance for the property acquisition that being five thousand dollars and due diligence of three thousand five hundred to make the eight thousand five as well as authorize the county manager to execute the purchase agreement and any other related documentation on behalf of the Burke County Board of Commissioners. Gentlemen, you've heard uh, Commissioner Carswell's uh, motion. All those in favor, uh, signify with uplifted hand. Motion carried five, nothing, Madam Clerk. So we have another motion on the table. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have another motion. That motion is to approve the purchase of 1.62 acres of real property located at 3152 NC18 South, Morganton, NC, Further identified as PIN number 27126248292, read number 5577, and to appropriate up to 
$325,000 of general fund fund balance for the property acquisition of $295,000 and due diligence at $30,000 to make the $325,000, as well as authorize the county manager to execute the purchase agreement and any other related documentation on behalf of the Burke County Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Vice Chair Carswell. All those in favor of the motion signify with uplifted hand. Motion carried five nothing. And at this point, gentlemen, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.